Everybody knows that you have to have a sewing machine to make a quilt, but have you ever thought that a serger would come in really handy? I'm going to talk to you about that today. Most quilters say, a serger? Ah, I don't need a serger. Let me tell you what. Once I show you this, you will love it. You take a quilt that has been already quilted. This is just a practice piece that came off the long arm. And the edges are not, of course, joined together. A lot of times you'll have spaces where there's no quilting and the fabric can come apart or ravel. People don't always bind their quilt right away. Sometimes, like me, they fold it up and put it on the shelf. This is a table runner I made several months ago. Still haven't put the binding on it. What happens over time though, as you move it and handle it and touch it, the edges start to fray and the edges can start to come apart. But if you take it to the serger before you bind it and put just a serged edge around the edge of your quilt, now you've done a couple of things. You've kept it from fraying, you've got a perfect edge to lay your binding on, and you've cemented those edges together so that when you do put the binding on, they're not shifting and buckling and puckering on you. It is a great way to pre-finish the edge of your quilt. But I'm going to show you one step further today. Using the serger, this is our beautiful Baby Lock Triumph serger. It's an eight thread serger. I'm going to show you how to put your binding on with the serger using fusible thread and it's going to be your new favorite method, I promise. So today we're going to be sewing on the Baby Lock Triumph, top of the line serger that Baby Lock makes. Eight thread serger can do wonderful things. But like the other sergers in Baby Lock's lineup, this machine has jet air threading. This is such a wonderful feature. Anyone who's owned another brand serger knows how incredibly frustrating it is to try to thread the loopers on a serger. But Baby Lock has made that so easy, so much easier. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to thread the lower looper of this machine with fusible thread. We carry this wonderful fusible thread here in the shop. You iron it, it melts, it fuses fabric together. So I've threaded up the serger, the lower looper, remember that, lower looper with fusible thread. I'm going to come down here and set the machine to the threading position. It locks those tubular loopers there so that the thread can shoot right through. All right, I'm going to put about a half inch of thread down in this little hole right here that has an L, that's for lower looper. Press this button and zoom, it shoots right out. It's threaded. All right, so I'm going to set it back to surge, close it up. I've got it set for a four thread overlock surge and that's how I'm going to put my binding on. So let's look here at the edge of this. This is the raw edge of a quilt. I'm going to put raw edges together, put my binding on like this, start it about right there. The fusible thread is in the lower looper, which means that it's going to get sewn on the underside here. So I've got my serger ready to serge. I've got the knife blade up so that I can just trim off any extra uh, pieces of batting that are sticking out or extra threads. I'm going to put the foot down. you want to trim off is strictly up to you. So I'm attaching my binding and cleaning up the raw edges at the same time. I'm going to come down here where this side ends and I'm going to stop about a quarter inch before the end of my quilt. And then I'm going to turn it and sew off at a 45 degree angle. All right. Now my binding is sewn on. I've got that nice fusible thread on this side. I can miter my binding. 
by turning it up, finger press, down, finger press, and put it right back in the serger. And these sergers are so powerful, they can sew through many layers of fabric and batting without even slowing down. All right, now I'm not going to finish the whole quilt because I want to show you the next wonderful thing. So now I have brought my quilt over to the woolly pressing mat, which if you're a quilter and you don't have one of these, believe me, you want one. These things iron so much more efficiently than just a regular ironing board. They heat up, they uh, um, absorb steam, and you get pressing from both sides of your fabric. Okay, so I brought it over here to the um, ironing mat and I'm gonna flip my binding over now. There's the fusible thread on that side of the quilt. I'm going to flip the binding over. I'm going to take my little mighty mini iron here. We sell these at the Cotton Blossom. And I'm going to iron my binding down. Just flip it over. Bring it to the right side of your quilt, or the wrong side, however you like to attach binding. And look at that. The binding stuck down. No pins, no clips. Now when I take it over to the sewing machine to sew it down, I am home free. And two, if sometimes you may want to hang a quilt or hang a wall hanging, before you sew your binding down, this is good to go. This will last. I wouldn't wash it a bunch of times with just the fusible attaching it, but it is certainly good for the now. Do you see how beautifully it's stuck down? So now I've brought the quilt with the ironed down binding over here to the Baby Lock Solaris with the digital dual feed put attached. That is the secret here. So let's watch how it stitches down the binding. So we've got the digital dual feed walking foot attached to the Solaris. We have lots of machines here that include digital dual feed walking feet. Again, if you're a quilter, this is something you want. The digital dual feed foot comes with a standard sole plate, but it snaps off and you can attach different sole plates to it. This one is a stitch in the ditch sole plate. This one right here is a quarter inch. You can piece with this foot. It is wonderful. But I'm going to use the stitch in the ditch sole plate today. So I'm going to attach it to my sewing machine to the digital dual feed foot. It just snaps right on like that. Now I've set up my machine with a straight stitch and I'm going to run that stitch in the ditch blade right along the side of my folded over ironed down binding. I have moved the needle over just a little bit, maybe three or four threads worth of space. I've moved it over to the right. That's going to allow the binding to be stitched down and this blade to keep it perfectly straight. As long as that blade stays beside the fold of the binding, then my stitch is going to go straight down the binding. No more wavy lines, no more stitching on and off the binding, no more puckered binding. It is a dream. I used to dread sewing on binding. Watch this. Look at that straight line. Digital dual feed, walking foot with the stitch in the ditch sole plate. And there you have it. So you've shown one of the many ways to put on binding, right? Right. This is my favorite though. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on different ways to put on binding and the use of the serger in a quilt.
beautiful things come together one stitch at a time at, at the, the Cotton, cotton Blossom. blossom.